Ways Your Identity Can Be Stolen Hey everyone, it's Alexa, and welcome back to Taltanic. In a world where information sharing has become so easy and accessible for everyone, it's important to remember that not everyone has your best interests at heart. There are many ways those people can gain access to your personal information and do damaging things with it. These are just some of the ways thieves and hackers can get their hands on information you desperately need to keep safe. Before we get into today's video, make sure that you're subscribed and ring the bell so that you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Bothersome phone calls. In this day and age, we all know about these, and everyone's probably gotten one or two, at least. Have you ever received a call from someone claiming to be from the IRS? Did that person also claim you owed them money and demand payment? Did they tell you that you have a refund waiting for you and all they need is your bank account info? Don't fall for it. This is sometimes referred to as vishing or voice phishing. This is somebody trying to gain access to your accounts or trying to get you to send them money and it's not real. They'll try to scare you by telling you that you'll be arrested or that you will owe more if you don't pay now, but that's not typically how the IRS operates. So before sending them anything or giving them any account info, make sure you know who you're talking to. Text attacks. This is just a little tidbit, but it goes right along with the annoying phone calls that you may receive demanding money and or information. You should always be on the lookout for text messages with links inside that encourage you to click. Be wary of links in general, but you may get texts with links that either direct you to a site that asks for information or that download malicious software onto your device. Just, you know what, don't click links. Familiar fraud. Those who try to pull off this type of identity theft are some of the lowest of the low. Why? Because they're related to you, living with you, or are close to you in some way. These people may be your closest friends, your children, or even your parents, and if they have access to your mail or personal information in some other way, they can use it. Many parents will even use the identities of their own children in order to gain credit or money. There are even those who search out relationships just to gain access to the other person's financial information. Don't get duped and beware of everyone around you because you never know when your own flesh and blood may turn on you. Malicious software. Did you open something you weren't supposed to open or click on a link that took you somewhere you weren't expecting to go? These days, there's a lot of protection against viruses and other malicious software, but sometimes these things get by and they can do a lot of damage. Sure, they can make your system crash or slow your computer down to the point where it barely crawls as you use it, but it gets worse than that much, much worse. Some of these programs can either find your personal information or can be set up to record your keystrokes, which possibly allows thieves to see your passwords and other important private information. Get some good antivirus software, and if you ever think something is wrong, don't use your computer until you figure out whether it's safe to use or not. Mail and document theft. Have you ever been waiting for an important document that never arrived, so you just wrote it off or requested a new copy and forgot about the original? Or maybe you've thrown out something with your personal information on it before shredding it. Both of these things can be bad for you, especially if those things fall into the wrong hands. Identity thieves can use basic bits of information to glean more about you and gain access to your accounts. So it's important to follow up on missing documents such as W-2s or even bills. And don't throw away anything with any of your personal info on it without crossing it out or shredding it first. Invest in a shredder to ensure that you're doing what you can to protect yourself from thieves. Search engines. Did you know that hackers sometimes go as far as setting up entire websites that look just like the ones you use just to steal from you? They can say, set up a site where when you go to buy something, it collects all of your credit card information. They can also create sites where you, without knowing it, download software that can be harmful to your computer or even aids them in stealing information from you. These criminals know how to manipulate search engines to get their fake sites ranked high so that they appear more used and trustworthy, which makes users more susceptible to click because they seem legitimate. Be careful of what websites you visit and check to make sure you're on a real website before giving up your financial or other personal info. Phishing. You may one day find yourself the target of phishing, which is kind of what it sounds like. Someone phishing for your information in a variety of ways. One such method could appear like an email from your bank or some other institution that you're associated with. Typically, there will be a subject line that's intended to grab your attention, and when you open the email, it'll more than likely look official. It may ask you for more information about you, or tell you that you have a charge on your account that needs to be reviewed, or even a warning about an overdraft charge you incurred. You may then be asked to 
click a link, which will take you to a site that looks just like your bank's website. And once you put in your login information, the thieves have it. Many banks these days have protections against things like this, but to be sure, type your bank's website into your browser and sign in that way, and then review your account. Don't click links. Evil Twin Wi-Fi. You need to be wary of your information and what you do on your devices while you're out in public, and you most definitely need to take care to watch the Wi-Fi you hop on. It's very easy for hackers to set up the Evil Twin Wi-Fi, and they typically make it look as though it's provided by somebody trustworthy. They may use the name of the establishment you're in for the name to make you think it's the shop owner or some other name you'll possibly trust. It will even take you to the internet, just like regular Wi-Fi. One key difference is that the hacker who set it up will have rigged it to spy on the things you do and send out, like bank info and passwords. They may also have it set up to send you to a malicious website or provide links that will download software you don't want on your computer. Be more careful in public. You never know what traps are set up. Shoulder surfing. Now, this may sound like new terminology to some, but it's an age-old practice. Shoulder surfing is where somebody literally spies what you're up to over your shoulder or from beside you or any other way they may be able to see the things you're doing. This occurs at ATMs, grocery stores, or anywhere else you use your cards. It can also happen when you're on a computer or your phone. You may not realize someone's watching for you to type your passwords or credit card numbers, but it does happen. Some will watch you type your passcode into your phone, remember it, and then they can just take it from you with full access. Be wary of those around you. Checking dumpsters. Now, we already talked a little bit about your documents being stolen if they're not shredded, but even you can't adequately protect yourself from your personal information being taken from paperwork. If a medical institution such as your doctor's office, banks, or even your school doesn't shred your documents, you could be in for a world of hurt. Yeah, this is an unglamorous way to steal info, but it does happen. In fact, Dr. Nancy Baxter of St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto decided to do some research after finding a janitor in her hospital carting away patient documents for supposed recycling. She and a team dove into dumpsters and retrieved what they could, a total of 1,300 pounds worth of paper waste. In it, they found 2,687 documents that contained the personal information of patients. On a scale from low to high sensitivity, 802 documents included info of low sensitivity, 843 held medium, and a staggering 1,042 had patient information that was highly sensitive. Pickpockets. Pickpocketing is alive and well, and it can be quite lucrative for those who are good at it. Oftentimes, pickpockets won't just steal the physical money from your wallet or use your credit card to rack up charges. These days, the thieves can take documents, card numbers, addresses, and other information inside to build a dossier of information on those they steal from. They can then take those dossiers chock full of someone's information and resell it to make a profit. That, or they can use it themselves. Pay attention to your pocket, your purse, or wherever else you keep your wallet. You never know who's watching. Phone theft. This one probably doesn't even need to be mentioned, but there are those that don't think about things like this. Be careful with your phone and always put a passcode on it. If you'd rather use a fingerprint, that's fine too. These days, we do everything on our phones, from online banking to accessing our social media accounts to online shopping. These little devices make everything a little easier, but they can also make things pretty easy for a thief to access as well. And if you lose your phone or have it stolen, there can be significant consequences. Card skimming. You may have heard of this, but do you think about it when you go to an ATM, a restaurant, or a gas station? A skimmer is a device that very well might look just like a real card reader, but when a card is inserted, it steals vital information. Some skimmers can be affixed to real card readers and look like the real deal, like this one in this photo. It works by taking information from one card's magnetic strip, and this data can be copied right onto another card. Once your card's been skimmed, the thief with the information may very well copy it and make purchases or withdrawals with your money. Check to make sure there are no skimmers set up on any device you may use your card with before you use it. 
We've seen some pretty crazy ways that people can get their paws on your identity, and we still have one very scary one to go. But first, we'd like to ask you, have you or anyone you know had their identities compromised or outright stolen? What were some of the consequences and experiences that came with it? How did it all end up? We'd love to read all about it in the comments below. Through the workplace. Now, this is scary, and it's also one of the most important one of these to note. Did you know that roughly a third of identity thieves managed to get their hands on valuable information they used to steal from others through their jobs? Convicted identity thieves were surveyed by the Department of Justice, and they found that the thieves stole information while working in places such as the DMV, for mortgage companies, or for major credit card companies. Even job applications can be used to glean information on someone. It's sad to think that someone employed to work with your personal information can't even be trusted. Wow.